All right, everyone, from Elon Musk to the Japanese Prime Minister, have been out in recent weeks warning about artificial intelligence, AI, where computers can create their own content on almost any issue, meaning the potential for misinformation, propaganda, well, it's limitless. It's already happening too. Now, it's Orwellian. And that's a warning from the Australian Human Rights Commissioner, Lorraine Finlay. In a recent article for The Australian, I'm pleased to say Lorraine Finlay joins me now. Lorraine, thank you for your time. It's not just about information, of course. It's about machines making judgment calls and machines making high-level decision-making. We have previously, all throughout our history, left to human beings. It's got a lot of a, a 1984 Orwellian tone to it. What makes it so dangerous? Well, thanks for having me on the show, Peter. And it's important to realise, on the one hand, this has huge potential. It can be transformative in terms of productivity, efficiency, accessibility, but there are real consequences and real risks. And my concern is we haven't thought through those risks and yet the technology is moving ahead so, so quickly. And you mentioned Elon Musk. If you look, for example, at the evidence given to the US Senate just in recent days by the chief executive of OpenAI, who said, if this technology goes wrong, it can go very wrong. And you look at the warnings given by the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, only a few weeks ago when he left Google to talk about what he called the existential threat to humanity that this poses. And what it really comes down to is this technology potentially transforms our ideas of what's truth and what's reality. Are we talking to a human or are we seeing something generated by a machine? And, you know, I think 1984 is a great work of fiction, but we don't want it to become reality. What about the implications for democracy? I mean, in Australia, we still require people to turn up and vote. Oh, I think they should have ID, of course, but that's not the current position. A lot of countries overseas, though, use machines. What about the impact of AI on, on distorting the vote? Well, again, I thought the evidence that was given before the US Senate subcommittee earlier this week was really telling, because when the chief executive of OpenAI was asked about the risks, he said the number one thing that he's concerned about are the implications for democracy in the upcoming US election. And the real concern here is disinformation can be spread so quickly, so cheaply, and to so many people. And again, when we're starting to have to question what's real and what's not, the risk of misinformation and disinformation is significant, the risk of political bias is significant, and the risk of chatbots hallucinating is something that we've already seen. So I think there are very real risks, and it's something that we really do need to be aware of, talking about and acting on. So what worries you the most? There are a whole range of things, both that worry me, but also things that excite me about the technology. So I want to be very, very clear. I think there are enormous benefits as well as enormous risks. Mm -hmm. And we need to find a way to harness those benefits while protecting against the risks. But I think probably the number one risk for me is that in a democracy like Australia, we need to be very realistic about the fact that not every country in the world shares our views when it comes to the importance of democracy and the importance of human rights. And again, if I go back to the godfather of AI, Geoffrey Hinton, what he said is, we can't be sure that bad actors won't use these things for bad reasons or won't do bad things with the technology. So, so, so I think in Australia, we need to take a lead on responsible and ethical usage. All right, well, just on that point, given you're inside the sort of the, the government framework, how do we do that? How do we get government to um, put, put a pause on this if they can, which was what Musk has said recently, put it on hold for six months, let us get the regulatory framework in place. We didn't do that with the internet. I used to work for Richard Alston when the internet came to Australia. He was a communications minister. He said, let's get a framework in place. Everyone called him a Luddite. Um, we can see there's a lot of good with the internet, but we can also see there's a lot of harm, particularly to young people, uh, uh, the online exploitation of children and more. So, so how do we learn from what we've got wrong in the past and get it right here? And, and how much time have we got? Because people say that, that the growth of AI, the sophistication is exponential, saying we haven't got a lot of time. How do we do it, Lorraine? Well, you've raised a number of really important things. The first thing is time is not on our side with this. This is moving ahead so, so rapidly that we really do need to move quickly. But secondly, we need to learn from the mistakes we've made with the internet and with social media, where 20 years on, we're trying to retrofit 
safety guardrails to protect against the harms that we didn't identify early on. And I think there are a few things we need to do. The first is government needs to think about law reform and regulation. But we do know that's a slow process. So in the meantime, we need to have businesses thinking about responsible and ethical usage, and we need to have individuals really starting to be aware of how they're using this technology and thinking about how they want to engage mm. with it. So I think law reform is part of it, but that's too slow. We can't rely on that alone. Lorraine Finlay, I want to congratulate you for, for buying into this really important topic because unless people like you are raising it, government's got a lot on its plate. These things aren't in front of mind. So I think it's a really important contribution this week. Thank you for your time.